Hello, my name is Carlos Sepulveda and in this video I'm going to teach you how to create these time tabs and these time tabs have has a couple of things which are really interesting. So first of all, we are going to organize the top so we can have the image to the left. We also are going to make the vertical loading uh, thing which uh, by itself is a little tricky. Um, also, we are going to include the time trigger with JavaScript. I'm going to provide the JavaScript and actually you can see the JavaScript in the description of this video. And also we have this title inside of the tabs, which is not directly possible, but I'm going to teach you another trick in the video. So it's time to for it and let's jump into Webflow. Okay, so let's start in Webflow with the structure. We are going to need a wrapper for this. So the wrapper is being is going to be called tabs component. Then inside of tabs, let's bring the tabs. With this tabs component, it's going to be a little different. I'm going to make it a hundred EH. And these tabs, let's call it wrapper. Wrapper tabs is going to be the tabs component. It's going to take the full width with 100%. And here, because we're going to place this, um, the tabs menu, which is the content area, we're going to place it to the right. And the tabs content, which are the images, we're going to put it to the left. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make the tabs component to be a flex element. The direction is going to be horizontal then I'm going to just move. I'm going to use the, um, the the keyboard to just move it to the top. So right now it's taking the first position. Then what I, what, can, what I can do here is that the content here, I can call it ACC content. Let me check the, um, the JavaScript first. Yeah, I can call it like that. Just making sure that I call it the menu to be ACC underscore tabs menu. Actually, I'm going to do it now. ACC underscore tabs menu. And here I'm going to call this. Uh, okay, that's fine. So the tabs. Let's see if I need something for the pane in the JavaScript. The JavaScript works really well with you know just making sure we are respecting the the structure so in this case we are going to call the tabs as a tabs as a as acc tab and we are going to call the acc menu as acc underscore tabs menu so just making sure about that okay so let's call the panes tab pane I'm going to copy the name of that. I'm going to paste the name. Uh, I'm doing this because I don't like to duplicate the tabs. I, I think it brings some issues, some bugs to, to Webflow for some reason. ACC tab. I'm just going to copy and paste the names. Another tip is that uh, instead of duplicating one of these elements, which I can just do by duplicating here I'm what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go directly to to the tabs menu here in the settings and I'm going to add a new tab so here I'm going to add a new tab here and this first tab so this is the current tab so actually we can play now the the animation and we can see that it works because the active tab is going to be changing so let's see that in action. So now you can see that the tabs are changing. So that's because the JavaScript is running. And what I need to do now is just adding the correct class name for the menu and then the correct class name for the tabs. So this is what I need in order to make it run. So if I just choose another one, like let's say I just you know choose a previous one and I wait for five seconds, then it keeps going. So that's good. Um, Okay, let's keep going with this. Okay, so I have the tabs now. 
So what I mentioned is that here inside of the panes, now I can include the images. So this is going to be um, pane image wrapper. And let's put the image pane image. And the content itself, this one probably might take around 80%, I guess. Then it's going to be 40%, but I don't know, somewhere around that is the structure that I need. Okay, now the images again. So I need to make to work on this a little bit more. So the fit is going to be cover. This is always recommended for the images. Um, then the, the width of it is going to be 100. Then I can basically copy this, com this wrapper and paste it into the other panes. So tab underscore pane is in a, another class name that I needed for it. Let's copy this, let's paste it up. Then here in the tabs, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is that I'm going to basically make it flex and make it vertical like that. Now I have the tab here. So right now I need to set up a little bit more the, the content of each of the tabs. So these are the menus, but let's bring also the title for it, okay? So in order to bring the title inside of the tabs component, which is not like intuitive to be possible, there is an, a trick that we can use to do to achieve this effect. So here we have the heading and I'm going to position it like in a place that you can see it easy. Okay, the trick is quite simple. So you select the heading or any component and you just basically drag it to the place that you want to include it in one of those components that says, hey, non top a link element cannot be placed inside of the tabs menu. But if I hold the option key right now, then this is not going to be true. So I just included a heading inside of the tabs component. I can get rid of the other one, but actually I'm going to just keep it. I'm going to name this um, time tabs. And I'm going to create space here. So let's call, let's make it two rem. Okay, so I can bring some content now uh, instead of, well, actually, because this text is too big, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, edit it a little bit, like it could be tabs, heading, and let's make this to rem. Let's bring the content. Okay, this is still too big. I can reduce more this. Let's make it normal. Let's now create some some space in between. So let's make it 1.5 RAM. I think that works. Now here, what I want to do is that I want to stylize this. So let's bring those values to zero like that. <clears throat> And there is a structure to follow here. So first we are going to need a div block for the toggle, then a div block for the container, the content, sorry. And then a div block for, for the loading line, the vertical line that is loading. Then another div block for, well, that's for the wrapper and then the actual line. So that's the, the arrangement that I need. This text I can put it into inside of the toggle so ACC toggle then I have the ACC content then I have the ACC line wrapper and the ACC line okay so now let's let's arrange this more so uh, seems to be a little bit confusing, but now it has more structure. So what I have to do, let's stylize this. Uh, okay, the ACC tab, 
now instead of being white i'm going to make it transparent let's see if i have like a transparent color added to the variables no i don't have it but i can just you know create it very easily so that's the the transparent color now i'm going to bring more content let's bring this let's bring the paragraph Okay, we have the two pieces now. Let's bring an image as well. So let's make it more real. Um, this is the first element that I'm targeting. So this one is the first image for that first tab. So I'm going to make sure I have an image for this. That works for the moment. And this is going to be the active state. So for the current state, I'm going to make it still to be transparent. I don't want any variation for that. Uh, let's work in the toggle. So we have the toggle. Let's create some padding in that. Like that works. For the content, there is also padding. Uh, I'm using the shift key for having like equal padding everywhere. Now this line, this one is going to be um, a special one. So here inside of the ACC tab, I'm going to make this element relative. It is relative, but I'm just making sure. This one is going to be absolute, and then I'm going to place it to the side like that. And I'm going to add a width for this. Let's add it two pixels. Sorry, that's the height. <laughs> Let's make it 100%. Then the width is going to be two pixels. And the color for this is going to be a very soft tone like that. Then that's the wrapper of the line. Now I need the line. The line is going to be a hundred percent height then the color of the background of that line is going to be a darker color like this but also i need to apply to the wrapper a clip because i i need i need it as a mask then uh what i can do here is that i am almost done with this so i'm going to make the same setup for the other for the other tab. So I can just remove the content from the other ones. And I'm going to paste this content later. So, okay, let's finish up with the animations. So what I'm going to do is that when the tab changes, I'm going to make the line to load. Okay, so we have the current tab here. And actually, let's create another wrapper so I can just easily can copy and paste the content. This is going to be ACC content. Content wrapper. Okay, content wrapper. So this is the toggle. So, okay, the tabs change. Oops, I also want to make the content to be clip. So when I have like a height of zero, so it just just easily um okay let's remove now the padding here so i can easily uh create that masking effect okay so this is the acc paragraph and then to the paragraph i can add some padding like this then if the content goes to auto then I have that. Uh, okay, so now let's just copy and paste the content in the other slides. That's what I have for this. And then let's make the the current tab. Okay, now probably I'm being uh, yeah, I was being um constrained by the height of the width of the of the container okay so i have uh okay i was about to apply the animations okay then the tab change what it's going to do is that when the tab changes 
you're going to create an animation. Let's remove this for now. Let's clean that up. Okay, when the tab changes, I'm going to make, first of all, the, this image, sorry, this line, the line itself, to go from minus 100% as initial state to zero. So in half a second, it looks like that. Okay. Then also I want the content wrapper. Let's say this is the ACC underscore content. So I'm going to make it to be size to be zero pixels from the beginning. And then when it opens, it opens to auto like that. So I can do that. And actually, if I hit all again, this and I go and apply to the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, let's create an <clears throat> the out. Let's create the, the out position. So let's duplicate that. Now I need the line to basically could to go to zero to sorry to oops just changing the values here so I'm going to need to make everything to reset here now I need to apply this to the class okay so how that looks looks like that okay there is an issue with did I make this the the mask for the line wrapper? Uh, let's make it a harder one. I don't think it's going to be relevant. Yeah. So let's check that again. So the line is going to move to zero, but then when the slide changes then it moves to minus 100 okay so just now I just need to add the images just to be fair with the content so let's do that quickly Okay, so this is the structure. I am changing in between the tabs like that. And if I publish this, if I go to the live site, I'm going to see that I have the first item to be triggered when it loads. Then after five seconds, it changes to the second tab. And after another five seconds, it changed to the third tab. I can click again on the previous tab just to reset the timer. And it keeps going automatically. So let's wait for the final one to just go. I'm not going to click anything. And you can see after this one, the, the last one, it goes to the first one. So hey, that, that's it. I hope you really enjoyed how to create these time tabs. Uh, the, there were a couple of challenges into this, so but it was super fun to create. This was another component we built for this PixelMoth project. So we are super happy about building it and yeah, there, there was so much learning into it. So hey, thank you so much and see you in the next video.